I'm very pleased to say that I am joined now, live on the line from the United States, by trainer Wesley Ward with news of his Ascot plans. Wesley, good afternoon, good morning. Oh, thank you so much for having me on. Not at all. Thank you for, thank you for joining us. Ten-time Royal Ascot winning trainer. Will we see horses trained by Wesley Ward at Ascot this year under current guidelines? Well, we're going to try to get over there, if at all possible. And what are, what are they telling you about whether it, is, whether it is feasible? No, it's certainly feasible right now. But, you know, as, as things are changing and, you know, the guidelines and restrictions are changing, um, you never know. But right now, you know, we've got a plan in place and, and we're all set. So what's the plan? Just take us through it. Um, the flight schedule is uh, right towards the end of the month here. We have a couple of dates locked in, uh, and we're going to go to the English National Stud. I am not, unfortunately, going myself, neither are any of my help. I have uh, some staff in place that has worked for me over, uh, over the course of the winter and have gone home in early March, so they're, they're already in England at home uh, anticipating and waiting for these horses to come. So you essentially are sticking the horses on a plane and issuing the instructions to a group of staff who are going to pick them out the other side effectively. Yeah, and fortunately, um, i you know been in contact with Frankie, and he's got um, himself and, uh, and some others that, that are going to help me, namely Kieran Fallon, um, when he gets off. And I have Ollie Sankster that's over there that uh, is likely to help me when he's you know fish, finished with what he's doing with Hugo Palmer in the morning. Uh, so we're, we're, we're looking good right now. So you've got a serious team together, a Sangster, a Dottori, and a Fallon to, to, marshal the, to marshal the troops. How many horses do you anticipate sending if all things go well? Um, well, I've got two older horses, uh, one in Kamari that was beating the nose last year in the, mm. in the Queen Mary, and she came back. Um, she had a trouble trip in the Breeders' Cup. And when, in her only start this year, in the, uh, last month, she, she had a really, really decisive win at Oakland Park in the slot uh, on, a, on a muddy racetrack. So that was good. And she's come out of the race well. And she had a beautiful breeze on the grass here yesterday at, at uh, Keeneland, as well as Bound for Nowhere. It was just, you know, he had a, a nice comeback race in March, um, just beaten right on the line at, at Santa Anita. And he's been training forwardly as well. So those two old horses should have a, a, a real strong showing, um, as well as some of the two-year-olds that I'm bringing over. So, so we'll see what happens um, as, as things are going on. So Kimari would run in the Commonwealth Cup and Bound for Nowhere in the in the Jubilee. Either yes, the King Stand or the Jubilee. I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, I'm leaning more towards the King Stand right now. Okay, and he's run a couple of great races at, at Ascot before. Now, how are the how are the, this year's two-year-olds? I love it when you uh, when you talk about your your two-year-old flying machines. I think they're doing well, very, very well. Um, you know, it's, we've been having to switch things around with, with the virus here and having racing all day in my normal, you know, where I, I bring them up to Keelan, um, and Earth Mark, and sort of have the last couple of things on the dirt here. I'm just, I'm just losing you a little bit, Wesley. Have you, have you moved? Yeah, I said, um, I, I, unfortunately, we've had to relocate things and change things around. Um, to where we've had we brought the horses up to Keeneland in Kentucky in early March and then had to circle right back around and bring some of them back down to Florida. So that's just interrupted your training schedule slightly, but which which horses are in pole position to come as things stand at the moment? Well, nothing's really concrete right now. Um, a couple of the winners I've had so far. Uh, we're certainly going to be coming over, as well as some that are going to be running uh, this week coming up. I've got my best ones have yet to start, so they'll be starting here in the next week. And which are the best ones, Wes? <laughs> well, we'll see. We'll see when they if, if they perform in the afternoon as well as they are in the morning. But um, you know, we're we're looking to to have a you know a, a, certainly a smaller team than in years past, but uh, really quality. Do I, am I going to get a name out of you? I've got, I've got to squeeze a name out of you before this interview ends. Well, I'll tell you, I, I have a really, really nice colt uh, for my owner's Ice Wine Stables. They owned uh, No Name Ever in, in partnership with Coolmore. Yeah. And, I, and, and uh, they're, 
American Italian, uh, and they named their horse uh, after Dr. Fauci, who's kind of leading this uh, the, the whole virus uh, situation as far as the medical. He's the head of everything, and they named the horse Fauci. And he, he's a very, very talented horse. He's scheduled to run opening day at, at Belmont on uh, June 3rd. So, and then we've got a flight for him on the 5th to go out if he forms, performs as well as I think he is. So we'll see what happens. It is, as ever, uh, uh, an ambitious, a grand, a brilliant plan. I hope it all hangs together for you, and we look forward to seeing Fauci. Wesley, thanks so much. I'm sorry we won't see you at Ascot this year, but hopefully at a race course somewhere very soon.